Zaxby's, indescribably good. And play four quarters. We kind of disappeared in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, we had some opportunities that we didn't convert, we didn't complete, um, we didn't make some blocks, and, and um, you know, the game kind of got away from us. Third quarter, kind of had a couple three and outs and penalties, but the big plays kind of jumped up again. There was the 80-yard screen pass. It just looked for the life of it that it was going to be a couple-yard game. Kid broke it out, and then the 69-yard pass. Big plays. I mean, how do you just deal with that as a, from the coach's perspective? You just kind of take it for what it is and move on? Or Well, you know, it, it, what's, what's funny is, is, is um, you know, defensively, we played a really good game. Individually, when you look at the individuals, each individual played well over right. the course of the game. But one play, one, one time, a guy does the wrong thing, doesn't run to the football. We still have some inconsistencies there, um, and, uh, and that's hurt us. Uh, the, the flip side of that is we, you know, we played a lot of good football this year defensively. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, you know, and, and um, I still feel like we have a chance to be a really good defensive team, and, and, and we've shown that at times. What's disappointing is obviously we're giving up big plays, um, but I think those things, a lot of our issues can be fixed. I think, uh, you know, we've got a young secondary, or at least our corners are new, and our mm -hmm. safeties played corner last year. They're two right. different positions, right. and we've made some mistakes back there. We've had some adjustment problems. Uh, but I think our kids uh, are aware of kind of what's going on, and, and they're working their tail off trying to get better, and, and um, we're going to make some strides versus Wheeler this week. So the off week, um, kind of what kind of schedule did you have with the kids after the last year game? You had some time off. Um, the school was closed, so what, what kind of uh, schedule did you all follow last two weeks? We practiced uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We gave Monday and Friday off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but what we really want to do is go work on us. We want to work on us coming right. off the ball. We didn't play well on the offensive line versus last year. Want to work on us coming off the ball and being physical. Wanted to work on the Walton Raiders being the Walton Raiders. Um, going in, playing, you know, we've seen four wide teams. We're going to have some pro, uh, pro style teams that are similar to us coming up. Yep in Etowah and Milton and uh, really work on that aspect of our games. We worked against ourselves a little bit and turned the tempo up and, and tried to be physical. Um, and we had a really good week, really good three days of practice. We felt like we got better at some things. Um, but, you know, we have to transition from having really good practices into playing four great quarters of right. football. We haven't done that yet, but we've played some good football at times this year. And if I feel like if we can put those things together and our kids can understand how to go out and play with some consistency and really focus, I think, and this is because we're a young team, focus is our big issue, is learning how to focus um, and understand that, that this play is important. Every play, focus and be right. disciplined every play. And, you know, a lot of that comes with being a young team. That's not an excuse. Um, but a lot of that comes from those mistakes or young mistakes and, and – um, you know, I, I see us getting better at times, and, and uh, I do think we'll put it together before the season's over with. You're 2-1 in the region. As I said, Etowah's 3-0. Lasseter, Milton, and, and Walton are both 2-1. and one. All three of them are 2-1. You've got Milton and Etowah still ahead of you on the schedule, mm -hmm. so you know, the season's all still right there in front of you, despite what the disappointment last week at, 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 with the Lasseter game. This week, Wheeler comes in. They start off the season with two wins against Sprayberry and Pope. <clears throat> um, you know, there's been some, some commotion there, the, the quarterback you know, leaving the team. and um, They've lost four in a row, but they lost a really tough game, 21-19, to Roswell this past week. The program's a much improved program. Mm -hmm. They've got the players that you can't sleep on them despite the fact that they're 2-4 and 0-3 and and in the region. I think if you look at Wheeler, um, you know, first off, they're a very well-coached team. Uh, Mike Collins has done a great job taking that program from embers, uh, you oh. know, I mean, literally, and, and have made them competitive yep, again. I absolutely. think if you watch your kids, their kids play very, very hard. They've got a plan offensively and defensively. De their defense coordinator, Davis Harvey, is a good friend of ours. Um, and it, they do a great job. I think if you watch their kids, they really run around well on defense. Uh, you know, Davis and I were talking the other day that – you know, we both felt like we'd be better on defense at this time this mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. um, and I know they're in the same boat. They feel like they can be a really good defensive football team. Uh, and they've made some, made some mistakes and made some errors over there. But if you watch them play, they're in a lot of ways a lot like us. They're, they create a lot of negative plays. They do a lot of good things on defense, but they just seem to kind of make a mistake here or there um, that puts them in trouble. We're in the same boat. I mean, I think if you look defensively, we're very similar teams. We both have a lot of talent. And I think whoever comes out of this off week has done a great job coaching their kids and really get their kids to respond to understand that these next four games, uh, you know, both these teams are going to have a chance to get in the playoffs and play, play you know, play a home playoff game. Um, uh, but, you know, when you watch them play, they're very similar to us defensively, offensively. 
they've done they've got a great plan on offense regardless of the things that's going on there with the quarterback. The other kid they've got come in is a very dangerous kid. He's a great athlete, a really good runner. Um, they've got very good skilled players. They play well, play hard on the offensive line. Um, so you know, it's regardless of the record. I know those guys. I know how important that game is against oh, Walton. Yeah. Yep. We've been on the other side of it. I remember 1996, and we had not beaten them in 11, 11 tries. How big that game was, and I understand how those kids feel over there. They want to beat Walton. If they beat Walton, they salvage their season. I can only think of one time that they've beaten us in the last 10 or 15 years, and it was that, I guess, 2006 or five over there when. When they had that, that team that made you know might have won the may have won the re- in two thousand six they, they won the region they won the region yeah they did two thousand six we we came a couple, couple points short your team you you can only do what you can do and focus on your team you've had the week you've given them the kids a little bit of time mm-hmm. off um, but they now need to know that with the, this the last three game behind them Wheeler Milton Etowa all in front of them you you truly are in the take them one week at a time guys play our game and then we'll worry about the next one when it comes, right? Uh, you know, I have told the kids, and I believe this, I think uh, we went out, we're region champs. I do believe that. Oh, sure. I, I think I, we're, I think I think think we're right. region champs. Uh, that being said, the Wheeler game is the most important game on our schedule. It's the one here. And that's what we have to learn how to do is, is we've played, and anybody's watched us, they've seen this team play really great at times and then and then not play great and, and, play, and play some football that we're not accustomed to seeing out of our kids. Um, uh, you know, so I think that's one of the things we have to learn to do is we have to learn to be consistent. We have to learn to be disciplined. We have to learn to focus on today and today being Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever they practice. And our, you know, one of the things I focused on the last two weeks is it's focused on me. Well, what am I doing? How can I be a better head right. coach? And you know, and we've we've talked to our kids about our seniors: be better leaders, be better seniors, be better football players. Let's try to be great. Let's set the bar high and work our tails off. We've had two good practices this week. Uh, we've got to finish up on Wednesday, have another great practice, but then we've got to transition that into four great quarters of football, which we have not done yet. One thing I want to go back and mention about the Lasser game, the crowd actually turned out to be a pretty good crowd. Mm-hmm. I mean, a very loud crowd, a large crowd, and we were all a little concerned about that with the school break. So, Raider fans, you've got another big rivalry game coming up here against Wheeler. We need to have you in, in Raider Valley again for that game. Now, Rocky, we're here on the couch. Bob McLeod just walked in with our Zaxby's uh, props here for a sponsorship. And, you know, I'm also thinking that reminds me a little bit of the Seinfeld episode when uh, what Kramer finds the Mike Douglas set. Now, this it doesn't quite resemble that, but um, you know, we could have invited Bob in, but he's just over there eating. He's over there eating Zaxby's chicken, which is a good thing to do since the sponsor of our show. You, um, after, the, after the Lasseter game, um, you had a big day up in Nashville. You went to Disney on Ice. That was it. You did, okay, because um, you're a good dad, and that's what dads do. And then you ended up, and you ended up at the, uh, the Missouri Vanderbilt game. And all the dog fans here this week are kind of suffering a little bit after Missouri. But you got a kind of a preview of what was coming to Athens in a few weeks with when James Franklin, the quarterback <clears throat> in Missouri, really took it to, to uh, Vanderbilt, and quite frankly, I think shocked quite a number of people. Yeah, you know, I expected to be a really good game. Um, I think, uh, you know, after watching Missouri live and direct right there. Um, you know, they're skilled. They're very skilled on offense. Yeah. And obviously, losing the quarterback is going to really hurt them. And yep. and and I I never like to see college teams lose a guy like that. That will impact your season. I yeah, I like to see guys play out and see where they could go, and hopefully the health of a player is not an issue. Um, but you know, when they're they've got their quarterback in there, they've got some guys who can really run around at tailback and and make some people miss. Their wide receiver core is if they're big, talented. They're as good as anybody's out there. Defensively, I think the thing that's really surprised Georgia this week is how well they got after the quarterback. Right. And you could see them, um, you could see the foot speed. They're, they're, you know, they don't look like Alabama and LSU, right. but, uh, but you don't necessarily have to. They really can run around defense in their front seven uh, and, and can chase people around. And, and, you know, I think they've got a very good football team. Hopefully they'll, they'll be able to overcome the loss of the quarterback and, and continue to compete the rest of the way. Well, they've got a tough one. Florida comes to uh, to Columbia this week, mm-hmm. in Columbia, Missouri, and um, you know the SEC is starting to reach that grind right now. So, uh, and the Bulldogs, you know, had a had a tough. When Missouri knew they couldn't run the ball, it changed everything. It changes everything, and with all the receivers that they had out, I mean, you know, it was, uh, you know, it, it, in a game like that, when you know your top two tailbacks are out and you've got multiple receivers are out, uh, you really you really need your defense to step up and play great football and give you a chance to win on a defensive game. And, and um, you know, obviously that didn't happen. 
Um, uh, you know, I know Georgia fans got a lot of Georgia fans around here, and and you know everybody knows who, uh, you know knows me. I'm a big LSU fan, but I do root for. You know, I follow Georgia and I root for them. I really like yeah. Mark Rick. I think he's a very good man, and they've, we've got a few kids there. They've yep. been very good with our kids. Um, so I hope the best. When you lose a guy like Todd Gurley and, and all the receivers who've gone, yep. you know, it's going to make a huge impact. You just don't plug new guys in and keep motoring forward. We talked about this before we started the show. I'm, I grew up in central Pennsylvania, very close to State College, and families with Penn State people. You know Billy O'Brien when he was here. Um, what you, what do you, how can you comment just on, as a coach, facing that amount of adversity? And you know, I think we're all kind of just amazed at what he has done. But as a coach, how do you, mm. how do you face a program? How do you get kids to buy into something like that? I, I think you have to have vision is the first thing. You have to have a vision of what you're going to build. But beyond that, you have to sell them on. I think he's done such a great job of this. He's taken – the focus is no longer on what happened there. Right, right. The focus is on – He's back on football, but he's put it on his kids, and he's sold these kids as heroes. And you can, I man, you can just see when they take the field and how that stadium reacts to them. Um, they will forever be, and they'll probably never win national championships with those guys or anything. But those that group of guys who stuck it out and stayed there and coached, and and Coach O'Brien and that staff who went there yeah. and stayed there. You know, because he stayed because of the commitment he made to those kids. It's in some ways you look at what we're lacking in society, and man, that's golly, those guys are everything that we need. Yeah. And but you, those guys will be immortalized, and they they're they're the backs that they'll rebuild that program around, and they'll they'll for always be one of the most special groups of kids. And regardless how many games they win, they never oh, yeah. win another game there. Those guys, fifty years, will be able to come back. And the people, uh, uh, you know, Penn State alumni and fans will look at that group of young men and they'll always be special because they toughed it out. And when the commitment they made meant something to them and they take the field every week and they play with pride and they play for something more than wins and losses, they play for that whole community, the whole school, and everybody who's a Penn State fan out there who was, who was hurt with everything went on. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got the Wheeler Wildcats coming into town Friday night at 7.30 here at Raider Valley. You get there early because that game's going to be something you're going to want to see. Raiders are 3-3 three and three overall, 2-1 and one in the region. We're moving to 3-1, and one, folks, and we'll see you next week. The Rocky Hidalgo Show. I'm Kurt Schreiner with the coach on the couch. The coach on the couch. I like that. Um, we're going to add viewer mail. We're going to add Wayne's World next week. It's all going to be an extravaganza, but we'll see you at the Wheeler game this week.